So Claire, can you tell me why you've decided to take an animal-free approach to your work? Yeah, so decades of research using animal models to study RSV bronchiolitis have not resulted in any effective therapies to date. RSV is a human virus, and so we are keen to use human relevant models to study the uh, disease. So what animals would typically be, would, would typically be used? So typically uh, mice and rats are the most common used um, for studying RSV bronchiolitis. But unfortunately, they don't really develop much disease symptoms. Right. So it's a, it's a human disease specific to humans, but, but something that mice and rats don't actually get. Yeah. Makes sense that you would be taking a human relevant, animal free approach to that then. Yeah, and particularly using, uh, we use cells from children right. um, who uh, are the most susceptible to infection as well. And you have really strong links to the Great Ormond Street Hospital, so is that where you're getting your cells from? Yep, so we get, yep, we get our cells from uh, healthy volunteers uh, yeah. from, our, from Great Ormond Street Hospital. We're really proud to be supporting your work, Claire, and, and your researcher, Michaela. And, and one of the things I think that we funded is some equipment that lets you um, take a human relevant approach to your work. Uh, equipment that I think is a little bit like an organ on a chip, which people might be familiar with, but slightly different. Yeah, so we were keen to develop a model using commercially available plasticware um, that's cheap. Yeah, so that we can uh, replicate and, can, and make many units to be able to test for anti antiviral therapies on. Um, so th for this reason, we've been able to adapt systems that already exist rather than developing something from scratch, sure. which would be a bit more like an organ on a chip system. Yeah. So we use commercially available uh, trans wells and our cells are grown at an air liquid interface. So we still have this 3D environment that's like the lung um, because the lung would be, you know, supplied with nutrients on one side and the air on the other, which is what we're able to um, replicate in our system. So you've got that kind of replication of the bloodstream and then the air stream. <laughs> <laughs> the air, yeah, the airway. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, one of the key pieces of equipment that you've provided with us is a perfusion system, which allows us to continually add that medium uh, containing immune cells as well uh, to what would be the bloodstream side of our model. And that is enabling us to look at the immune response to uh, infection and what uh, the key drivers of that inflammation and disease severity we see in these children. So that means that the kind of the blood substitute is kind of pumping around and has got that flow that makes it a little bit more like a human environment. Exactly. So could the work that you and Michaela are doing impact other areas of work aside from RSV? Absolutely. The model that we're developing is a model of the human airway. Um, it's not specific to RSV bronchiolitis. So actually we could use it to study um, infection by other res uh, respiratory viruses such as SARS-CoV-2, uh, flu, rhinovirus. These are all very common um, uh, respiratory viruses. But not only that, but we can also use this model because it comes from donors, so children or adult donors. But we can also um, obtain cells from uh, donors who have um, airway diseases such as asthma or cystic fibrosis. So we can use this as a, a model to study airway diseases in general, not specifically to RSV. So it sounds like it really could have quite a few different applications then eventually. Yeah, that's Excellent. the hope. That's brilliant. And where do you see this going? What maybe is on the horizon for you? Um, well, I'm particularly interested in looking at the mechanisms of infection. Um, so what's driving the inflammation? So, you know, obviously at first we can look at antiviral therapies and, and, and just screen lots of compounds to see if any of them work. But ultimately, if we can identify the mechanism that's driving the infection, then we could develop our own therapeutic, which targets that. Fantastic. And how far away do you think that might be? Um, well, hopefully not too long. Five to 10 years could be um, within reach. That's, that's brilliant. That really brings kind of hope for patients. Yeah. Yeah, that seems within reach. Definitely. Fabulous.